Good afternoon, scientists. This is Mrs. Geis, and today we're going to be starting a new booklet in our Learn Ed booklet collection. I want you to go ahead and take out the green booklet that's entitled Diversity of Life. Now, this unit will also sometimes be referred to as evolution because we're going to be learning about how species adapt and change over time. That adaptation and changing of a species in order to help it survive is known as evolution. Go ahead and take out your booklet and open it up to page six and we'll get started. Now I'm going to record this entire booklet. This is a pretty short one. That way you can either do all of your notes in one sitting or you can break them up into smaller chunks, whichever works best for you. We will be discussing the different topics that are in the book each day during class. So make sure that you do keep up with your notes and don't wait to take your notes until the night before the test. All right, are you ready? Here we go. On page six, biological diversity. Biological diversity refers to the wide variety of living organisms on earth. Go ahead and complete the activity on pages six and seven by investigating the listed groups of organisms. We have groups of, for example, bacteria is one group. Plants is another group. Reptiles, birds, and then mammals. You should be able to write down some interesting facts about each of these groups of organisms. Page eight, extinctions. Evolution refers to the gradual changes in an organism or landform that appear throughout history. We know that evolution happens by looking at the fossil record. Biodiversity is related to the gradual changes, again, in an organism or landform that appear throughout history. This is known as an adaptation. Think of it this way. Adaptations allow organisms to adapt and survive. It's all about survival. So think of changes over time. Adaptations occur when organisms adapt or change in response to their environments. Adaptations are beneficial traits that allow organisms to survive or become more successful in their habitats. Can you think of an example of an adaptation? Think about the long neck of the giraffe. Think about the beak of the toucan. Think about superior vision in some animals. Those are all adaptations. Camouflage, speed, agility, sense of smell, hearing, and so on and so forth are all examples of adaptations. Select a unique adaptation from an animal of your choice and describe how it benefits that organism in the space below on page eight. Throughout history, many species have become extinct. That means they weren't able to adapt. They weren't able to survive. The disappearance of a species from existence on our planet is how we just define extinction. Extinction occurs when all organisms of a species die out slowly or rapidly if in response to an event. Select an extinct organism and describe an adaptation that may have helped the organism survive in the space below. In page nine, research the wide variety of extinct organisms threatened or endangered organisms and successful organisms to complete page nine. You will see that you have three columns, extinct organisms, that are organisms are, those are no longer on our planet. They no longer exist. Endangered organisms are organisms that are in danger of becoming extinct. And then finally, successful organisms. These are organisms that have been able to withstand a variety of changes in their environment, their habitat, their food sources, etc. 
On the space below on page nine, compare and contrast these organisms in terms of adaptations, time periods that they lived in, habitats, threats to them, and other characteristics. When you're finished, turn to page 10. Natural selection. Natural selection means change over time. It involves all living organisms that are capable of changing. Change over time. Again, all living organisms are capable of changing. It could be the change in the traits of an entire species. Organisms adapt to their surroundings in order to thrive as a species. Page 11, I'm sorry, page 10. Why must organisms adapt for success? Some must adapt to rapid changes, such as changing environments. They were, may require quick changes for organisms to withstand conditions or pass on their genes to their offspring. Insects are a great example of an organism that is able to evolve rapidly. Some remain relatively unchanged over time. If organisms are well suited for their habitats and their habitats do not require change or their habitats do not change, they may not need to adapt. We're gonna be talking a lot during this unit about Charles Darwin and his work in the Galapagos Islands. We'll be talking about the Galapagos tortoises. We'll be also talking about his study with finches, um, a small kind of bird that is from the Galapagos Islands and we'll also specifically be talking about their beaks. Natural selection, laws and theories that have contributed to our understanding of biological and geological changes. We know about the law of superposition. That means younger rock is above older rock in undisturbed sedimentary rock layers. We know about plate tectonics. Changing plate movements change landforms, climate, and sea level. Natural selection is what we're going to be talking about during this unit. It's the strongest organism's ability to survive when presented with a challenging environment. Natural selection, think of it this way, nature selects the best traits for survival. Over time, the beneficial adaptation makes up a larger percentage of the population. Natural selection, again, think of it this way, nature selecting those best traits for survival. We will be doing a lab that involves finch beaks and you will get to see firsthand how an organism is designed can benefit or inhibit the organism's ability to survive. Natural selection may lead to gradual change in a species over time. We call this survival of the fittest. Only the best, remember, will survive. You've probably heard that phrase, survival of the fittest before. Now you know where it came from. Natural selection was based off of Lamarck's theory of use and disuse. It tells us if an organism did not use a particular trait, they could lose it in their lifetime. If an organism needed a particular trait, they may acquire it in their lifetime. So think about that. Do you think that's possible for an organism to adapt and change during its own lifetime? For example, think of giraffes. Lamarck said that giraffes stretched their necks to reach food. We know that is false. We know that the long necks come from the genes that are in the giraffes that have probably evolved over a long period of time. Natural selection explains the giraffe adapted to have long necks because the successful ancestors passed on the best genes so that the species as a whole could survive. Lamarck was incorrect. He said that the organism had the ability to stretch and change on its own during its lifetime. 
Some organisms are very similar, yet they are not members of the same species. Select two similar species and use the space on page 11 to describe their similarities and differences. So for example, a tiger and a lion. Be sure to explain why you think they adapted differently to their surroundings. An optional activity. Many times food sources are one of the main reasons a species must adapt. Predators become faster in order to catch prey and beak and tooth structures may change depending on diet. So we will be doing this together in class. We'll be working not with a partner, unfortunately, but I'll be allowing you to firsthand see how beak and tooth structures can inhibit or enable an organism to obtain food. So again, we will be going through this together. Uh, we will probably be doing this on Friday, November 13th. But for now, just go ahead and read over these pages um, and become familiar with them. Again, look at this giraffe. When we think of Lamarck, the giraffe is kind of the symbol for Lamarck and his theory that species could adapt and change during their own lifetime. So go ahead and open your book now to page 12 or flip over to page 12 and let's look at change over time. Studying geology, we know from our last unit, Earth History, uh, tells us that we are able to look at the fossil record and see how organisms have adapted and changed over time. Strengths of adapting. Whole species may adapt and change. This is supported by evidence in the fossil record. Weaknesses. Gaps in the fossil record and evidence are sometimes disputable. That means that maybe there's a missing link. Maybe there is something that's unexplainable. Theory. A theory is a widely supported hypothesis based off of repeated investigation. A theory is not proven. Many are widely accepted throughout the scientific community though. Areas of study when observing changes in organisms. We may look at biochemical evidence. We will look at anatomical evidence, and then we will look at fossil evidence. Summarize the following information in the areas provided on page 12. You may also choose to conduct additional research about biochemical or DNA, anatomical and fossil studies. There are many influential scientists that have contributed to the understanding we have on the history of Earth. With my help, we're going to be talking about Charles Darwin and we're going to be working on his biography on page 13 together in class. So don't worry about doing it on your own. It is perfectly acceptable to fill out under name Charles Darwin and then leave the rest of it blank in anticipation that we will do this together during class. On page 14, you see investigations. Natural selection depends on beneficial adaptations. An adaptation is a beneficial trait that better suits an organism for survival. Remember, it's about survival. This helps the organism survive and thrive. Meaning thrive means that you're not only surviving, you're living your very best life. Are you thriving? Natural selection, again, depends on those beneficial adaptations, a beneficial trait. This helps the organism survive and thrive. So some of these adaptations or these beneficial traits could be, one of them could be camouflage. That's an adaptation in which an organism blends into their environment. It serves two purposes. Not only does it help the organism avoid becoming somebody's lunch, but it also might help the organism in its own hunting ability. For an example, the octopus changes color to match sand. Octopi have an amazing ability to camouflage uh, and blend in with a wide variety of backgrounds. Another example would be 
of camouflage would be mimicry. Mimicry is an adaptation in which one species imitates or copies, think of it as mimicking another species to ward off predators. So for an example, this viceroy butterfly looks like a poisonous monarch butterfly. Organisms have the ability, animals that would eat a butterfly, know to stay away from bright colors such as this orange. It's in their genes to beware the color orange. The viceroy butterfly is not at all poisonous, but it benefits from the reputation of the monarch butterfly. How do we see natural selection? Well, pesticide and antibiotic resistance, mutation rate in viruses. Those are all examples of natural selection. Geographic isolation, for example, a barrier that separates species. We'll talk more about this in class. Reproductive isolation prevents interbreeding. Mutations, changes in DNA of organisms. And the changes in the number of chromosomes, polyploids. We will talk about this in class and we will use the space on page 14 to fill out the chart. In the peppered moth left on the left side here and the viceroy butterfly on the right, they are similar insects we can see, but they are both very different in that they have very specific defense mechanisms. Again, in class, we will use the space on page 15 to investigate and describe the benefits of camouflage, as you can see here, this moth, this uh, peppered moth is well camouflaged against this uh, tree bark. And the viceroy butterfly on the right, this one mimics the coloration or the color patterns of a monarch butterfly. But we'll talk about this in class, the benefits of camouflage and mimicry and how they help organisms to survive. So adaptations. Using page 16 as a guide, once we've finished page 16, I want you to go ahead and select an organism that is well known for some of its unique changes over time and draw three phases of its adaptive process. So for example, a horse or finches, like we're gonna talk about in class, giraffes, elephants. Complete the chart at the bottom of page 16 by researching four common shared characteristics among animals such as opposable thumbs, live birth, hair, et cetera. Don't worry about doing this on your own. We will do this together in class. The same as the chart on page 17. We will be researching eight different organisms with unique or strange characteristics. We're gonna analyze the importance of each characteristic and describe its benefit. On page 18, you can see that we have classification. The science of grouping organisms into taxonomic groups is the definition of classification. This is based on similarities among organisms. You probably talked about this last year in seventh grade. Biodiversity refers to diversity among living species, often in a particular area. We're going to use the space on the page again during class to describe how it relates to life on earth and how it impacts ecosystems and populations. Scientists use classification to organize and classify the millions of organisms that make up earth's biodiversity. That's basically a lot of animals and taxonomy is the science that helps us to classify animals or organisms into um, similar categories. And it's not just animals, it's also plants, fungi, bacteria, lots of different living things on planet Earth. So again, taxonomy, the science of classifying organisms into individual groups known as taxa. A taxon is a singular group. So the history of classification, Aristotle was the first to officially classify. He divided all organisms into two main groups. What do you think they were? plants and animals. If you said plants and animals, 
You were correct. They were further subdivided based on their habitat, whether they lived in the water, in the air, or on land. We now know that this is not the best way to group organisms. Just because an organism can fly, it does not mean it is closely related to all other organisms that can fly. Think of a dragonfly and an eagle. They don't really have all that much in common. They're more dissimilar than they are similar. So flies are insects. This is another example. Bats are mammals. If you think of the example of a fly versus a bat. Linnaeus's system of classification is what we base our modernized classification on. He expanded on historical classification to develop the new system. He decided that we would group things according to kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Kingdom are groups of different phyla. Phylum are groups of different classes. Classes are different groups of orders. Orders are different groups of families. Families are different groups of genera. Genus are groups of different species and a species is the most specific category. So if you have a cat or a dog at home, a canine or a feline, that is their species. That is as specific as it gets. An easy way to remember this is key, using the first letter of each word and making up a fun acronym. So for example, King Philip came over for good spaghetti. It's kind of silly, but it's the way I learned classification when I was your age. Chimpanzees, an example, organisms are members of the same species if they can breed and produce fertile offspring. Fertile means that they can have their own offspring. An example, chimpanzees can only reproduce with other chimpanzees. Gorillas can only reproduce with other gorillas. So we'll be working on the classification activity on page 19 together in class, as well as on page 20. So take a look at those organisms and just start thinking about them and we'll be working on that together in class. I will let you know when you need to complete the unit review on page 21 and page 22 that will help you to prepare for the assessment. Thank you so much. I appreciate you listening and I hope you have a wonderful day.